the Philippines is about to be hit, well, it's already begun with another typhoon. Uh, this typhoon seems to be worse than normal because you've got two going around, which is actually slowing the pace down, which means the, the speed at which it moves across the country is actually quite slow, uh, which is causing severe flooding. Now, I just want to talk to you generally about what to expect in typhoons. Um, because the, this one will run for days anyway and I recommend just watching some of the footage to get an idea of how severe things get. Um, there's up to six million people that are prepared to evac at the moment. There's about 15,000 in immediate risk of being evacuated, military getting involved, etc. Being through typhoons myself, um, although I wouldn't say we're we're fortunate that we don't get anything as severe, fingers crossed. But a lot of time you'll get people that won't move on. Um, for, this is why people say, well, why don't they just move? Well, the fact is, everything they own is in that house. As such, they're, they're hoping they can stay there and weather it through. Because I know, I mean, some of us are like that. I mean, myself, I would, unless it was actually pretty horrendous would not um, move on even when advised I mean you see it in, seen it in the US when they, they had some of those severe floods in the south the New Orleans stuff so people don't want to move they'll stay there as long as they can but what you want to do though is prepare yourself if you're going to stay um, have first aid kits we bought a generator we have enough food for a couple of weeks. Um, we have torches already pre-charged, weather and boots, um, plenty of water, stock up in drinking water because you don't know how long it's going to take to you can actually get the water pump <coughs> water pump stations going and if there's any pollutants in them. Um, and try and work out where it's going, keep up to date on the weather um, because once it hits, it hits hard it, it, it's not nice um, I've talked about the aid we did in Northern Sea before where we drove for miles and every telegraph pole was flat they were all snapped in half the, you know, that's your electric's gone, your telephone's gone um, your refrigeration's gone people are basically left with nothing but when you get up there most of the roofs are ripped off many houses are destroyed um, the whole area looks like it's just been flattened and it, that's no joke that, that's that's how bad it gets now I noticed um, with, it, with one of the news media groups they mentioned about 6,000 over 6,300 died at Typhoon Haiyan no they didn't it was tens of thousands, if not more. Um, the media don't really want to talk about the reality of it, or should I say some governments um, don't, because when you have a major disaster with a huge number of dead, people want action, so you play it down. So I'll leave that at that. So the death tolls are quite high. Um, the recovery rate of people getting back to normal there's a lot of people still not back to normal from 2013 from Typhoon Haiyan. That's how severe these things are. You also have the other issue that a lot of people were illegal in the first place. So once they've been off that land, any landlord with a bit of sense about them will be locking up that land to make it impossible for them to get back onto. So there's these things going on in the background, which is why people don't want to move can't move, choose not to move, because once they get into a refugee camp, um, like on CDO, I remember talking to Daisy about this, because the land itself was nothing to do with the aid project. They'd moved these tents and stuff onto private land. You know, one of these World Food Organization type outfits, um, I can't remember which one it was. It could be Oxfam or anybody. But they set all these tents up on private land and then just disappeared. Look, look we've done this. 
yes, you've you've set up a squatter village on somebody else's land, took a photo up, got your logo up there for more donations, and then disappeared. They don't do long-term thinking of these charities they like to call themselves or non-government organizations. There's no accountability. That's why I don't personally I don't rate any of them. Um, if somebody can actually bring one forward, it's actually made a positive change that's actually helped people long term, then please do, because I haven't seen one yet. It'd be nice to actually have something positive to say about them. Um, but getting back to the actual realities of the typhoon, travel will become extremely difficult. Um, planes won't fly, boats won't sail and roads may disappear. Landslides are very very common to the point entire villages have disappeared before because all the mud's basically gone over and covered the entire village. That's how bad it gets. Um, personally if you're an expat and you're in one of these areas that is very very prone don't live there. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Just don't live there. <coughs> the Philippines has got plenty of islands plenty of places to choose um, just avoid these areas easy way to look for them on the internet is look for typhoon Philippines earthquake Philippines da 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 and work your way down and you go okay well that I thought I'd move there but the last five years they've had major flooding earthquakes and typhoons maybe it's not the best place to move and do it that way because that I'm not being funny, that's my solution to some of these problems globally, is the fact is people shouldn't be living there. If they know it's going to have this problem every year, why would you want to live there? A lot of the flooding is actually made worse by several other factors. People build houses in the rivers and on the edge of the coast, etc. Illegally, because uh, they're on the stilts, you've seen them, the, the shanties and whatever. So obviously when you get this flooding coming down, the it just compounds the problem but also you got all the garbage that people throw, the plastic bags, the dirty diapers, all this stuff in the rivers so the rivers are already congested like an artery with bad cholesterol um, all these things make the problem much worse and you need to educate people to change their bad habits because they are the problem on these cases yes I know the in the squatter places may not have anywhere else to go but they should never have been allowed to build up there in the first place. Uh, what else have we got there? You got those, and then you've got the fact that the, the infrastructure investment is not great. The water systems do not handle the quantity of water going through. I know they keep saying we're upgrading, we're upgrading, we're doing this, we're doing that, but they've been doing that for as long as I can remember. I have yet to see where somebody goes. You know what? Did well this year. We didn't have any flooding, etc. It just doesn't seem to develop at the rate it should do. And that's what I was saying about the problems we have at the bottom of our road. Um, when I say the bottom of our road, it's probably about a mile and a half from where we actually live. It gets this flooding, very very thin flooding. But the, what, it, what it is, is when they decided to build a new subdivision, they went from that pipe to that instead of that. You know, bear in mind, they dug up all the road and the cost of putting that in is not that much more. But that would actually done the pipe work for the next 20 years instead of not even being capable of managing what was flowing before they decided to build a subdivision. Um, so those, these are all the things to look out for when you're um, looking at go at the Philippines during typhoon season. My wife doesn't like traveling in typhoon season. She was worried about us flying out in November. Um, I'll be honest with you, I've been on a flight where the flight attendant has been giving, giving the old sign of the cross and the plane has been doing this and it's come in very low to get under the storm to, to land not a nice flight to be on I don't know my mate Philip had a similar occurrence when the tail hit on the back of the plane or certainly felt like it because all the oxygen masks and stuff come out <laughs> so <laughs> bear in mind uh, typhoon season is not the best time to fly into the country but also it can make it very hard to get back out if you're only there for a fortnight because you could actually, if you hit it wrong you can't get a plane out for the next week because 
all the airports sort of shut down. Um, these are all the sort of things you should be thinking about. Um, would I recommend giving aid? No. That's a hundred percent no. Uh, you know, after this all hits, I wouldn't give a penny. I really wouldn't. The corruption's too bad. Um, and people are still complaining about where did all the relief go from Typhoon Haiyan. And they're right, where did it all go? There was billions sent there. They're still nowhere near the, the equivalent of what should have been invested. Even the UK sent two JCBs, I believe. I, I was like, what are you doing? JCB advertising these. Because the, the same day I went along Cebu Pier, Pier 1. And as you drive along, you've got all the shipping containers and the, the boats and everything on the right, the ferries, etc. On the left, there's at least a hundred plus diggers, 360s, excavators, etc. All the way along. Philippines doesn't need any heavy lifting equipment. It's got it. It's all there. What it needs is less corruption during um, these times because... It's often used as a time of opportunity rather than a time of helping. Um, I'll leave it at that because it's going to be political. But personally, I would not give a single centavo to any charity whatsoever unless I actually knew them personally. Um, I can't say any more than that, but I've seen it firsthand what they get up to. I've seen people turn up with a camera crew, uh, take their video and photos, Oh look at look at the devastation, blah, blah blah, and then just disappeared. They got the toll-free number up, made their fortune, and did not help at all. Um, they just you, exploited the local population. And these are international charities, by the way. I'm, I'm not blaming the Philippines for this. When stuff gets stolen, I blame the locals. Um, you know, a lot of that is done by you know who. Um, is, is well known, just not talked about too much. That's why I say, don't do anything unless you're doing it directly. That's why I do direct intervention when I'm there. I'll quite happily get a truck and go and do it. There's no pay. I, I pay for the fuel. The guys that come with us, I buy their dinner out of my pocket. And we, we give everything away. Um, that's why I ended up in the UK in the first place, is because we've given so much away. Um, I had very little money left myself, but I looked at it this way. For me to recover, it takes months. For those people to recover, it would take up to 10 years. And that's why I was happy to do my bit. Um, yeah, direct intervention is the only way I would do it. And it's not popular with corporations or anybody else because it removes all the profiteering that goes on charities, etc. Direct intervention. There is nobody to take money from because you give it away 100%. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, but I just thought I'd share this bit of insight from my point of view on the typhoon stuff because I've been there when a typhoon's been on and I've seen the devastation that's left afterwards. And if you search through, you'll see my video of the photos and stuff we took because we fed about a thousand people in one day. All right, thanks for watching.